Hey everybody, welcome to the program. Whoa. Let's try that again. Hey everybody, welcome to the program. How's it going? Today, my guest for the full however long we talk <laughs> is uh, uh, my friend from high school, Jonathan Brooks. Oh, thank you. <laughs> With the Charlie Milo on Will Will. <laughs> The Charlie Milo show. <laughs> the one and only. That is, that's so true. It is the one and only. <laughs> it was. Uh, it's funny. I, I spent uh, <clears throat> spent about a full day trying to come up with a cool podcast name, but I mean, there's, I mean, the the internet is literally a wasteland of of podcasts right now. Yeah. And uh, and and so I, I figured, what what would be the 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 most original crazy off the wall name ever and uh, it just wound back to basically the the same reason that i i titled my band after my name it's just like everything's taken now except for my birth name <laughs> you know? yeah seriously <laughs> so the charlie milo trio charlie milo program and then all of a sudden all of a sudden branding occurred <laughs> <You Yep. know? laughs> all right okie dokie all right so what i like to do on this show is i like to take people all the way back, like Jim Carrey to the floor back. So, where were you born, sir? <laughs> uh, I was born in Denver, in a hospital in Denver. Cool. But... Were Were you guys living up in Denver? Or... No, we uh, we lived out in like the Falcon area of Black Forest. Cool. So, <clears throat> more more kind of on the edge. And so you. Uh... You came back to Black Forest, you, uh, so the Falcon area, uh, that's not yet the, the plains that, uh, where, you, where you're currently, you guys live out on the plains now, right? Oh, no, we still live in Black Forest. Yeah. Well, well what I mean by oh, it's but, definitely yeah, the, the windy, spot. yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I would go over to your house and it would just be like, the <laughs> dense forest. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, oh my God, Oz at any point, you know? <laughs> yeah. But, um, so you, so windy out there. So you, you, uh, where do you, where, tell, take me through your academic career as it were. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, um, I went to Falcon preschool. Cool. And then I started going Did that to challenge your intellect over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. It was very, very stimulating. Then I moved out uh, to Black Forest and went to Black Forest Elementary School. Went first through fifth there. Like all five kids, <laughs> or was there were there more than that? In oh yeah, Black Forest yeah. Elementary. Yeah, there's there was a uh, there's probably a couple hundred kids in that entire school. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so. I bet rumors spread like wildfire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You can't keep uh, can't keep secrets in a small town, right? <laughs> or but, is Black Forest? I guess Black Forest is a town. You can like write it on the postcard and everything. Oh yeah, yeah. we got a we got a little fire station out there now, so we're actually <laughs> considered, considered. Well, that's a town. good. Yeah. <laughs> um, did you? Uh, were you guys affected by the the fire? Um, no, our house wasn't. It didn't didn't even get smoke damaged. Yeah, our our parents. Uh, it was crazy. We lost our shed house, so like basically all the crap that we could stand to lose because it was in the shed house, <laughs> and um, there was literally like a there was <laughs> there was like a swath of like burn up against the house. So the firefighter described it, um, you know, a little a little too religiously flavored for my liking, but the imagery was cool. He said it was almost like God put his hand over our house because our poor neighbors like to the, uh, to the South and, and, uh, East of us lost their entire homes on, on the street. <clears throat> Cause we were right on, or they were right on shoop. Yeah. And, um, I remembered it was close to my birthday and my mom called and was like, Hey, uh, so the house might be on fire. Um, so don't come home because I was living with him at the time. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and, I, and, and she was like, I got to go by. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just thank God I had. Well, I'll, I only had Bernie at the time. See, right behind. That's that's kind of Bernie's MO right there once he settles down. He's a good boy. 
Uh, okay, so you went to Black Forest Elementary, and that was one through five. And then where did you transfer to? Um, then I transferred to Challenger. And that's where bad you and I met, for, right? Bad name to name, whatever. Huh? That's Man. where you and I met, right? Yeah, that's where you and I met. Because I, I went from fifth grade at Eagle View, and I moved over to, Ch right? Yeah, I think I moved over to Challenger, and that's where I met you and uh, Brandon Loik and Kevin Walsh and all those names from the past. Uh, do you keep up with any of those guys? Um, I I try to keep up with, uh, like, Kevin and Lee. And... Lee Stur Stu Urmans. <laughs> yeah, Stu Urmans. <laughs> I, I didn't mean to give away anybody's uh, last names, but here we are. Yeah. But yeah. I remember one time Lee was like, that's, that's how I know to uh, <clears throat> hang up the phone is when they uh, overpronounce both U's. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, so... By the way, he sells pot pottery in Missoula. Pottery in Missoula? Right on. What he, kind? What he kind? He teaches at a pottery school and makes pottery. That's what our he. Because I remember the last time I met with him, he's he a potter, uh, a pothead. <laughs> he's a pothead. <laughs> so we uh, last time I met with him, he was teaching art at the Bemis School downtown. Oh yeah. So that that was still a solid while ago. He, I think he was serving uh, at. Um, that little CC, uh, what's a uh, Wooglins. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, he was always a good guy, but, uh, yeah, actually, um, a couple of years ago, I found a, a, f a thumb drive with my old, um, all the stuff I used to record. I recorded it on a, a compact 98 computer. Nice. And when it finally died, like many years ago, <laughs> I, um, I had all the information on a thumb drive and I had recently found that. And there's actually um, a jam session between Brandon, Kevin, myself and Lee. I must have figured out how to transfer it from tape onto the laptop and I was just listening to it. And um, it was it was crazy. <laughs> like, how did we do all those multi-platform things? I, I don't know. Yeah, like, uh, I think it was, we were, we were all still using tape. That's the crazy part. Oh yeah. Four track. We were using little four track recorders. I, well, I think what I had started doing was, uh, excuse me, two seconds. The toilet's running. We'll edit this out later. Cuss words. <laughs> All right. The Do suspense. bad things. All right. Do bad <laughs> All right. So we're, uh, where were we at before I was rudely interrupted by the, the of the toilet running? Uh, let's see. Oh, t uh, recording a tape and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I think what I, what I had learned or what I had taught myself was – because I remember you and Brandon – uh, both had four tracks. Like Brandon had like a, a Tascam four track. Yeah. Um, and I never really figured out how to work the the analog ones. I mean, I, I know now, but back then I was just kind of like, okay, so how do you do, you know? And so what I did was I, <clears throat> I downloaded the trial version of cool edit pro or cool edit 2000. And the compact actually had, um, uh, RCA outputs on the back side of it. And so I would, I would record in one window. I didn't, I couldn't get the, I didn't have the tracking plugin, yeah. like the multi-track plugin. So I literally would record guitar, um, into one window and then I would open the program again. So there'd be two windows open. And so I would literally have like 24 windows, you know, like, like <laughs> yeah. a teenager on instant messenger, just sort of like stacked, like a <laughs> solitaire card game going like that. And I would just make sure all the seconds lined up. And so I just would be like, okay, so if this is a uh, four minutes and 31 seconds and 328 milliseconds, I've got to make sure that the drums are in fact for, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so I would, um, yeah, it just was the 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 least intuitive process, but I oh, was yeah, like, it, it was like a video game or like some kind of puzzle, you know. 
and then when I uh, when I finally figured out how to multi track, I just was like, oh, holy shit, <laughs> the, the, I've been living without. Yeah, and <clears throat> I yeah, it was like the birth of digital recording, and right? Stuff so. Yeah, I, and uh, or your home digital recording. Oh yeah, I just well, I mean, I just remembered it was so cool that at, after a certain point, we were bringing our CDs to school and like exchanging them with one another. <clears throat> yeah. And that uh, that continued for for some time beyond our circle of friends up until like Bandcamp got started. Uh, do you know you know about Bandcamp? No. You basically like upload your album and people buy it. Like, I mean, it's the most. It's probably one of the most independent. Like, you know, you just you put your shit up there and people uh, send it directly to your bank account via PayPal and they take like four percent, uh, maybe up upwards of fifteen percent or something like that. But that's still crazy <clears throat> yeah versus like getting a, a seven cent check from spotify like once every three months you know yeah. <laughs> um all right so you transferred to challenger and how long were you there um from sixth grade to eighth grade so regular middle school and uh the is only that grades they taught there were you uh when did you start um writing stuff down <laughs> writing stuff down <laughs> well it uh, just after I learned how to, or that I could play and sing at the same time, and I could actually play other people's songs, and right on. this might be a possible future for me, mm -hmm. and stuff like that, so. I remember, um, when you and I met, uh, uh oh, sorry. Uh, when, wh what's up? Yeah, so probably around middle school. Yeah. Well, I, was, I was just gonna say when you and I met, you were you were the first eclectic I, I ever met. Um, <clears throat> meaning that basically up until I met you, I thought that I had to either dress this way or that way or the other. Not necessarily dress popular, but just I was like, oh, I've gotta I've gotta really find my uniform and and wear it really well. And then um, I remember you you could play a bunch of different cover songs on the acoustic guitar and you had original songs and you were the first person I knew that could like play a song from start to finish. If that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like there was a lot of Instead people that of would riffs. like start. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, um, Holy shit. I know the intros and the riffs. Oh, do you remember, uh, uh, I'll, I'll do my best not to say his last name because the story is crazy. Okay. Um, do you remember the music, te the really, really cool music teacher we had at Challenger? The he? The he. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the dude. Um, I really liked him and, like, respected him and, and looked up to him a lot. And I, I never stopped. But, um, dude, I, I basically dated a girl for three years who was, like, his... I'm pretty sure if I'm putting the pieces together right, uh, she was, like, his, his like, underage stalker. <laughs> she was yeah <laughs> creepy yeah middle school kids are so weird and like they're so hormonal well, and, and, and i i i dated her for about three years let's we'll say about like four years ago or something like that something weird like that and she just was like oh yeah i just thought he was so talented and his band would play ska music and i just would uh would hang around him while he would get drunk and like ramble on about music theory <laughs> yeah <laughs> going and, all um, the, going to all mr hoder shit oh that's okay fucking a yeah. oh, we... <laughs> edit. <laughs> edit are we allowed to even swear oh yeah totally oh, okay. we can, we can we can swear um yeah, my, my girlfriend and I were, were discussing the, the merits of the word cunt the other day on, on... <laughs> and, uh, she was it, she was it, saying it takes in... people aghast in America. That's why I love it. Oh yeah. It's a <laughs> it's a it's a I don't know, being a being a Gemini I can often see both sides of a lot of issues and, and the curse word thing is, is weird because I my big posture on it is that they're just words and you should be able to use them as freely as you'd use any other word. But at the same time, I really relish the power that it has against people that let it have power. <laughs> yeah. And the older they are, the more, <gasps> Oh my goodness. Yeah. Um, like 
uh, you and I have talked about this. People checking my my ticket at Walmart. Um, oh, I finally figured out why it's uh, why it bothered me when um, there's this there, this lady who I hadn't seen working at the front. And I actually this time I had like a full cart full of stuff with like this and that and the other in it. And she just peeked over and, uh, you know, she was an African American lady before I do the accent. <laughs> she just said, Oh, you got a, you got the King Kong in your basket. That's on my checklist. Do you, uh, you mind if I take a peek at your receipt? And I was like, no, not at all. You know, just because the fact that she was like, Oh, I got to do my job real quick. If you don't mind, you know, it's almost like when, um, when somebody asks for your ID and they're like, oh, can you show me your ID for the cameras real quick? You're like, oh, of course I can. But when somebody's like, ID, sir, you're like, fuck this motherfucker. <laughs> you <Yeah>. know? <laughs> this guy's such a dick. Yeah, totally. I get, riled, I get riled up like that. Yeah, if people aren't ecstatic in customer service, people get, <laughs> people start to get mad. Yeah, I that's and that's me, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, we, we were having... Um, breakfast the other day and i was i was being on on my best behavior because uh we were eating at the egg and i and i used to work there and they took this menu this item off the menu but they'll still make it for you if you ask for it and so i asked for it and they uh they the made dumb it for waiter me waiter said no right? no 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 they oh. uh they they made it for me but like the, the the manager in in training type brought it out and she said is there anything else i can bring you fine and I said, um, oh, sure, uh, the, my uh, plate was supposed to come with potatoes. And she goes, you want some potatoes? And I just was like... <laughs> and I yeah, just, I just, I I just remember the... being like, I wish I could set you on fire right now. Just yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. <you know? laughs> it's like, well, yeah, and bring me a little extra to throw in your face when... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh she just was you know and and the the gall of i mean i don't know when when you're when you're a server like i always felt like cooks have like professionally they have the elbow room to be a little gruff you know like like yeah. it doesn't hurt anybody but like if you're in the front of the house like literally the customer is always right unless they're trying to like stab somebody you know, that's not pretty good. much yeah yeah, like, <laughs> yeah they'll they'll tolerate so much for money right well and, and uh, like i said if, if somebody's being a jerk that's one thing like if i just like pounded on the table and i was like where's my fucking potatoes yeah you know that's one thing but i was like oh yeah you know my my plate was supposed to come with potatoes you mind if i get those and she's like you want some potatoes <laughs> don't be snippy with customers <laughs> sure you can you know <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, anyway. I, I work just cook a lot. And yeah. Yeah. My, my thing was, uh, I was prep manager for a long, long time. So d did you, uh, cause I, I've done the, where you show up at like seven in the morning and like make all the, the stuff for the day. Yep. Is that's, that, uh, yeah, totally. I was, the, I was in charge then I came in and opened yeah. and stuff or didn't not before, before we were open and. Yeah, I could. Uh, I was pretty good at that shit. I could never get the hang of the date system, though. <laughs> Sorry, everybody oh. at Red Robin. <laughs> yeah. FIFO, dude. First in, first out. First in, first out. Like you. Oh. Like you. So write... you rotate everything, and you have to write the dates on it, and make sure right. they're properly rotated. And... Right, but I just I remember being like chicken. How long do I keep chicken in my fridge? one month no i'm just kidding it wasn't yeah. ever that bad <laughs> but i think they had a schedule where it was like you'd slap a friday sticker on it and then uh you'd write the time in there oh then, okay yeah and and then you i think if you pulled it out you would take the friday sticker off and then just slap the new sticker on and write the the old time on it it was efficient but i just couldn't remember like i would uh, i would be in a rush and i would take it out and just pull the stick pull the whole saran thing off it and toss it and then uh i would go to put it back and i'd be like and, and then i wouldn't put i would forget to put the date on it and then i would pull it out the next day and just be like come on brain <laughs> i don't know and that's and that's why i'm podcasting in a musician <laughs> yeah oh well, yeah yeah i had to i had to put in my stupid time being a cook yeah yeah where uh where were you uh, a prep manager at 
Oh, Panino's. Oh, right on. They have one somewhere here. Uh, downtown? Yeah. I yeah. think, it, yeah. Yeah, on... I actually worked there for a few weeks. Didn't they, uh... And they didn't, they, they just kept lying to me. I, I was bastards. like, yeah, I was like, <laughs> I want, you know, short shifts... Um, I can't do split shifts because I live 45 minutes away. Right. And, <clears throat> yeah, they were just unaccommodating. And I was, when I got hired, I was told that I would get hired and paid the wage that I used to get paid, which was $11 an hour. Mm -hmm. And I expected that at minimum. Right. And they... I, my first paycheck came and it was minimum wage. And they didn't tell you that this was going to happen or anything like that. No, no, nothing. No, man. Yeah, yeah restaurants. Uh, res restaurants can get a little horse fucky. Yeah, and I said, you know, I I'm kind of disabled. I need flexibility and stuff like that. And they they just were like, well, if you don't do this, and you're fired. And I'm like, well. <laughs> then I, I guess then we were at I, an I'm impasse. Putting, then. <laughs> yeah, I was like, well, then I guess I'm putting in my two weeks, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so uh, that, that you know, we were talking about curse words having power. That's a that's another thing that people never expect is just like, uh, well, I just told you I can't do that, so I guess this is where Fuck it all. ends. You yeah. know, <laughs> <laughs> this is <laughs> this is where the fuck it's over for us. Yeah. <laughs> It's not you, it's me. Yeah. Well, I, over at Carabas, I was just, I mean. This isn't working out anymore. I was a busboy over at Carabas, and they were, I mean, the, the the manager over there was a total piece of shit. Like, all the girls were getting paid way more, and but he was, like, grabbing their thighs and shit like that. Oh, and, God. Um, and so we, I, I just remember I was not getting anything, because I was getting paid $2 an hour, and I was getting tips from the waitress but i remember like collecting my uh my tip money at the end of two weeks and it'd be like 45 dollars or something like that and i would just be like guns uh <laughs> this is not you know <laughs> and i remember telling there was a new manager and he was a total like you know i don't know like pick pick one like ken chad anyone any one of those kind oh, of oh he was a bro dude yeah he was a proto bro dude he wasn't oh, like gotcha, he, was, gotcha. he was like a business uh he really wanted to be like a, a restaurant working business professional, you know. Oh, gosh, he had he had really really thin silver glasses. <laughs> what a douche! <laughs> and so I remember telling this guy, he's like, short too. I bet. <laughs> yeah. Well, he just was always like, I don't know, dude. Like he wore like a different tie every day. <laughs> Lots of cats, you know. Like I mean, def this guy definitely researched his outfit, you know. And uh, but I remember talking to him one time, being like, "Hey, I need Friday off because I was starting a gig." And I, I said, "I need Friday off. I'm I'm playing somewhere." And he's like, "Okay, no problem." And then of course. Of course, and when he, Friday comes around, if you're not here, then I saw on the schedule. I was like, "Hey, uh, you scheduled me for Friday. I, I really, I'm, I can't come in. I've got a, a prior engagement. I told you about it." And he was like, "Well, legally, I can't force you to come in." And I was like, "Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> and, shit." <laughs> and so I didn't show up. And then, like the general manager, uh, he like sat down with me, and he was like, "So you didn't, you didn't show up to your shift because you." Uh, you had a show somewhere? And I was like, yeah. And he said, well, that's not really cool. And I was like, well, I'd, I'd imagine that it isn't. But at the same time... I told you. <laughs> I told you I wasn't going to be here. And he's like, all right, well, okay. Uh, you know, and he just, like, nothing happened. And, and so that's when I started realizing, you know, I was like, oh, holy shit. You can, like, you can tell people no. And it's, it's sort of like a 50-50, <laughs> like, the consequences are going to happen. Well, it's a, it's kind of sucky to have to hire somebody right so yeah it <laughs> turns out you can it's oh, it's really yeah people f managers especially hate hiring a new person right uh, which i had to do and mm -hmm. f fire people that's never fun right sometimes <laughs> it is you ever but, just take somebody aside and be like son 
You're getting too damn good for this business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I need to have a chat with you, young man. <laughs> oh, damn. Uh, no, I'd, I'd just be like, uh, they fired you. <laughs> and they're making me tell you. <laughs> That's rough. Yeah, like uh, I really don't care about your behavior or your like <laughs> sobriety here at the workplace as long right. as the work gets done. Right. But oh man, yeah, I, I just remember the uh, the playground psychotics of trying to work in a uh, in a real like a real job, you know. And, yeah. And just uh, it, it's weird. As as soon as I started focusing on music, people started calling me like sir and mr milo and stuff like that you know? <laughs> um it, it's still a little uncomfortable like uh when a real real young student like their parents will say like what do you say to mr milo and they're like thank you mr milo and i'm like oh boy that's weird but i uh, i feel as though i can't really say that's weird because it'll like shatter the the image um but uh yeah i i like teaching as long as they uh as long as the students want to be there yeah otherwise there, it's a they they don't practice it can, they don't it can progress. be nightmarish yeah uh, for both of us i'd imagine yeah because i mean it depends on the students like the more resilient time ones, can start ticking real slow when it's oh man frustration like, kicks in I'll, I'll say okay let's do the finger exercise and i'll look over at the clock and uh five minutes have passed and i'm just like she work hard for the money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, I've, I mean, more often than not, student like uh, students show up and they're like, "Here's what I'm working on." Uh, one of them actually did a um, like a chord melody of "You Are My Sunshine" on the bass, <laughs> and um, his ear is a little bit more developed than his uh, knowledge of theory and stuff like that, which I think. If I had to pick one or the other, that'd be better, you know, because if somebody only know like, it, like if if somebody can ace a theory test, that doesn't exactly mean that they'll be able to uh, play a great show from front to, front to back. Yeah. Um, but so this this kid played this really really like creepy "You Are My Sunshine," but he and I was like, "How'd you uh, how'd you come up with those chords?" And he said, "Oh, just whatever uh, whatever might you know." You know, I just went with the closest fingers and, you know, whichever one sounded the best out of the options of the, you know, the three options. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Challenger Middle School and then, and then what happened? And then I went to high school at Pine Creek and, uh, I had to, or I, I dropped out when I was 16 mm -hmm. because it was just. I don't know. It was a trying to smash a square peg in a round hole or something yeah. for me. I used to love school and get great grades mm -hmm. until I started getting higher and higher in school. Yeah. And all that knowledge, I was still learning it and acquiring it, mm -hmm. but I just didn't respond well to the... I don't know. It was all based around standardized testing right. and homework hours of homework yeah i i feel like uh i feel like we're in a serious overcorrection right now in this country because like i feel like everybody is aware of that issue but instead of actually fixing it they've just made it like they've just dumbed the system down so they're like here you go <laughs> yeah and they lowered the bar <laughs> uh -huh. I, I mean it's still standardized testing and 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 trying to fit uh you know, you meet you need school in, needs funding. Yeah, school needs funding. <laughs> That's well, and I, I was sad, trying to but... I was trying to argue uh, against the concept of public school uh, with somebody on Facebook, and somebody was like, "Well, well, what would your kids do if you if you didn't have public school?" And I was like, "They they would develop goals. Like they would they would either they would either do what I do." Or they would like get another interest and start doing that, and I think that that's a much better way yeah. to live, you know. And um, I just remember people are like, "Oh, public school gave me a lot of options," and it's like, "What options did public school give you that you couldn't get from like the library?" Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh man, I, I hate or it. I never once checked um, to see if somebody had an actual high school diploma. So, <laughs> as a hiring manager, yeah, as a hiring manager. So, I I don't know. Yeah, there's I consider mean, that kids. <laughs> yeah, I was I was talking to um, some young people and uh, some at risk youths, some some uh, some Michelle Pfeiffer dangerous minds, and uh, I was telling them I was like, really, grades are pretty arbitrary unless unless you need them. Like, if you want to get into a profession that actually requires a specific college diploma, like doctor, uh, lawyer, you know, things of that nature, you, then you have to get, like, you can't really rebel against the system because you're getting a no. job that is Yeah, in the not system. until you're 18. And... Right, yeah, you're basically on the hook for school forever <laughs> if you want to be a doctor. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, yeah. My parents had higher expectations than, like, Cook. <laughs> but, well, but I was, uh, I was doing well. I progressed really far to manager and mm -hmm. had, I had my pay at a pretty good rate for when it was going. And I, I worked since I was like 16 years old. So, yeah, I remember, um, uh... When, when I started getting homeschooled in, in high school, after, uh, where, where was it? Uh, yeah, I went to Pine Creek for freshman year, ended up getting homeschooled. And then, um, what was I doing? Oh, 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 I was doing the Brigham Young University correspondence stuff. And, uh, yeah, like, it's literally like, like a, a book that you I, I know I just know who Brigham Young was <laughs> yeah I uh you know it's so it's so hilarious because um my dad was so the just doing the work wasn't cutting it so they put me in a tutoring uh cubicle <laughs> called Abacus Learning Center yeah and so uh you know, they were talking about Brigham Young, and they're like, oh, yeah, we're accredited for Brigham Young or whatever. And, and my dad's like, um, you know, Michael Jackson graduated from Brigham Young, <laughs> you know, university. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> and uh, I, he and I laughed, and that was it. <laughs> no, but that was the total sum of laughter after he said that. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, somewhere in the middle of that, I just was like, well, fuck this. I don't want to, I, I'm really, it's like, I didn't realize what I hated, uh, about school until I had to like do it, but like do standard stuff by myself. Yeah. It's, it's like, I, I, I was late to the concept that I liked to learn until really I had a smartphone. Oh, I got something fucking in my eye. But, um, but yeah, when I had a smartphone and I started being able to be like, I don't know. Let me check. And I was like, oh, f you know, fascinating. Like yeah. Mr. Spock, you know, <laughs> check. Oh, should I keep kicking, kicking the mic? But, uh, yeah. So I loved, I loved learning and I think I always loved learning. I just wasn't aware of it because I always got A's in like English and art. And whenever it came to remembering stuff that I didn't want to remember, like history, um, social studies which i don't know what the fuck social studies even is um i guess it used to be civics but then they changed it to social studies yeah and i guess it's, civics was a it's little... like modern anthropology or something right I don't know. <laughs> oh my god the the amount of <laughs> dumb anthropologists i've anthropologists Anthropologist, i've talked to yeah <laughs> well the thing you don't realize about anthropology you know <laughs> It's almost like uh, psychology majors or sociology majors. Almost, almost. One of my. Uh, I uh, only know one person that made it as a, like a sociologist or, sorry, like whatever. Actually, that and an archaeologist, and well, uh, like, she moved up to Alaska, uh -huh. and uh, they're finding new sites because the, the thawing. Uh huh. So they're finding. All sorts of really exciting things up there. Well, that's fucking cool. She has cool. to, like, take two planes in. 
Yeah. And then uh wingsuit to the site. <laughs> yeah. No. Well they they go to the dig site and then uh <clears throat> they set up their camp there and they slowly build a cabin. So it's it's archaeology so it's stuff, not bones, right? Or both. Yeah, both, both. Right on. That's and cool. uh yeah, they're finding all sorts of awesome uh Neanderthal stuff. So Right on. Yeah. That's cool. I wonder on the timeline uh, maybe you can answer this for me. On the on the timeline, are Neanderthals any in the the Egyptian royalty? Are they anywhere close to each other? Yeah. Yeah. That's that's well, a, like well, like what do you mean? They could breed and it would create offspring. Well, no. What what I mean is like the Alaskan Neanderthals and the Egyptian like pharaohs and stuff like that. Uh, the are crazy those, inbred guys? Yeah, are those completely different uh, eras of time? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I just wasn't sure if they're like... Um, yeah, so... Yeah. I'm, I'm always fascinated how stuff goes right into the ground. does, And, and uh, it doesn't like get... Like, because I would imagine stuff over millennia, like thaws and, and refreezes and thaws and refreezes... So I would imagine a lot of this stuff would move or shift. Yeah, it does. Um, but the ground, I don't, I don't, I don't know. My dad was a <laughs> geologist. Oh, cool. it, it just doesn't happen that fast, really, unless there's a lot of water in the area. So it would literally be like a couple of feet. Be like he died yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, wouldn't oh, be. Wait, that. No, it was over here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, on that, that stuff fascinates me. And uh, uh, when they bury dead bodies, they usually like wrap them mm -hmm. and put them in weird boxes and right. stuff like that. So yeah, I was uh, the the tomb stuff always fascinated me. Like the belief that they would take all that stuff with them into the afterlife. Um. But you know what? What's really interesting is the the fake dinosaur people. Have you talked to any of those kinds of people? I no, I've seen I've seen the archaeologist things, but I, the, I've seen people that think God put dinosaur bones here to test our faith in Him. What? <laughs> yeah. He All put right. a lot of things on the earth to test our faith in Him because they like almost freaking disproven. <laughs> oh that that is a, a new concept to me so like something that can be proven or disproven um against uh whichever religion that you're talking uh probably catholicism or basic christianity um it's like those homeschool christian right evangelical right the the new earth christians or whatever kind of they they have like their their own homeschooling programs and <laughs> they're yeah, they're insane yeah it's like the uh, the mate factor people the 12 tribes of israel i guess they they do their best to keep their their wives and children like dumb so that they don't wonder about their lifestyle <laughs> <laughs> and what's what's funny to me is you you see the people in there there's a lot of there's two different kinds of people. There's the people that, that fucking believe it and they own it. And then there's people that are like there for the soup. <laughs> you know, they're, hey, welcome to the Mate Factor. I'm 28 days sober. May I help you? <laughs> <laughs> and then those people are usually gone like within the month that you see them. <laughs> I've they, only been there once. Oh, oh have you? Oh, the... The stuff that they serve is I don't really remember just... it. I think I was blind drunk when I went there. Oh, uh, yeah. I've, I've definitely done that before. <laughs> but, <laughs> I mean, it is right next to the, the bar that I play most frequently in Manitou. But, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I, 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 I quit the sauce just because... Um, not, not for any sort of moral reasons, but uh, just health. Like, it keeps giving me gout. And, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know if you have anything like that that's caused by something you put in your body like almost directly um i i think i'm gonna develop asthma when i'm old because of smoking cigarettes sure i'm i'm trying to quit i'm trying to cut back but yeah i was uh 
you know, cigarettes and booze, I was able to both quit, you know, like cold turkey like that. But um, yeah, every I, I once just... in a while, I like I find myself craving sugar. <laughs> like that's the big one for me. Um, I know people that are just like, yeah, I don't need sugar, and I'm just like, well, you know, go fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah, I I drink soda. I'm guilty. Oh, I, uh, I, I'm i pretty good on not buying soda, but, like, if it's in the house, like, if somebody... like if, Dude, if yeah, my the... mom drinks Coca-Cola all the time. Yeah. I had a... I had a... It's just aunt. like, how many 12-packs do you want? And I'm like, <laughs> God. She's like a cone head you... with, like, opening the six-pack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. All right, so... We have a downstairs fridge for Coke. <laughs> oh yeah, you have we a, also you have, have an antique cold. Yeah, that antique Coke yeah, fridge. Oh my god, I that thing doesn't work anymore. Blast from the past. Um, I remember you told me you and your brother learned how to play pool with a uh, with a slant. <laughs> like, uh, you, or I don't know if this is true or not, but you said you would like uh, hustle people. <laughs> like that, you were like, okay, well, it naturally like slants and so we'd be like i bet i can i bet i can beat you and you'd have the total like home turf <laughs> yeah home turf yep. advantage. <laughs> oh dude lots lots of fucking fun memories in your basement and, yeah i've and, had pool and tables clean and sober fun. memories too that's the that was the weird part i remember uh you know i won't go into it but uh at one point i had to do uh straighten or shape up which is like the uh the PG-13 version of uh, Scared Straight. And, uh, <laughs> and they were talking about... They were, they were asking all of us, and I was in there I was in there with a bunch of bad motherfuckers, you know, like these kids that were my age, and they were like bringing knives and, and drugs to school and stuff like that. And they were asking me, when was the last time you went to a party that didn't have any drugs at it? And I remembered like literally within the week... Um, we were over, a bunch of us were over at your house seeing how much milk we could drink. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. Um, yeah, one time I was at uh, a boarding school in Durango and we were just, you know, you, you get antsy, you know, and so we, we just were, we found a, um, like a plastic flugelhorn that you have at like football games and stuff like that. And we attached a, a rubber uh, tube to the bottom of it, and we were literally uh, shotgunning Dr. Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that was that was probably the, the some of the worst nose burn that I've ever had. When just like the the, the oh, your bubbles, sinuses you know? fill up with yeah, it's like there's Dr. Pepper in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Pine Creek up until you were 16. And then what did you uh, did you get the the GED or anything? Yeah, I got yeah. the GED like actually the same week that I dropped out. I planned it pretty well. Right on. Did uh, how how is the GED test? I've always been curious. There is a thirty minute video right before it uh -huh. on how to use an eleven button calculator. <laughs> I had heard that it was pretty easy. It is a <laughs> walk in the park. It is. Yes. Oh, goodness it gracious. It is very, very easy. Well, there, um, somebody was, uh, you know, once again, a, an at-risk youth, we'll say, was asking me about um, the, the GED test. They were like, man, I really don't want to be in school. And I was like, well, are, are, do you want to do something that requires good grades? And they said, I don't think so. And I said, you should probably look into getting your GED and getting the fuck out of that prison. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, the only, the only trouble with getting your GED at like, say age eight or 10 is that then you've got to occupy your time, you know? <laughs> exactly. Like I've got a, uh, I've got a buddy who, uh, you know, they've recently fallen on some hard times, but before that, they had, uh, I shouldn't say they've fallen on hard times. They're like more resilient than that. But, um, you know, they're going through a rough patch right now, but his daughter, um, I'm pretty sure she got her GED when she was 11 or 12 and she was, uh, she was a competing like Olympic figure skater at like 13, you know? Oh, crazy. Yeah. And it's just sort of like when, 
<laughs> when you take away the timeline of like, okay, well, first you have to go through this shit, and then you've got to go through this shit, and then this shit. And uh, the fascinating thing about the the uh, elementary school, middle school, high school system is that a, you can fool a dumb person into thinking that you're getting more freedoms the, the, the higher up you get into in the education, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's like, now you get Chick-fil-A for lunch, <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and I just remembered... Uh, uh, yeah, like as opposed to those K through 12 schools and stuff. Right. Or or things like you can, if, if you're old enough, you can leave campus to eat lunch. Yeah, versus, versus yeah. Versus like, uh, I remember it. Um, oh, they're, yeah, their dumb little reward system that, yes, would keep a dumb person occupied, but. I love, uh, I love Frank Zappa's, um, and he said it, you know, almost like 30 or 40 years ago, but it still rings true. But he, he's, this quote was, um. Uh, public school teaches you uh just enough to do a job and uh just little enough to not ask any questions about it <laughs> <laughs> well and, and i i think uh you know to work in an assembly line right <laughs> well and the funny thing is is like i've been um i've been thinking about strategy a lot lately like um obviously you, you gotta hate hitler but when you look at how he rose to power that's you know i mean a dumb person couldn't really do that no he was he was pretty smart he was a terrible writer and a terrible painter <laughs> yeah maybe if people everything bought some else more of but his paintings he'd uh, chill out a little bit <laughs> yeah he was really good at um inspiring people and right. stuff so yeah um being a leader but what was it? oh so the the strategy of the the system now to keep people in schools is fascinating and I think the way that they're doing it is that they're they're hiring more and more liberal teachers to to uh, push the social justice warrior agenda. Oh gosh! Not I mean not really I mean that's like the censorship that's, agenda. That that's like the that's that's pretty blanket statement what I just said but it's like they're hiring more people that are more about your rights than edu like your quote unquote rights than educating you. And so instead of getting an education, an education, kids are just learning how to be pissed off for no reason. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I think that's, I think that is brilliant that that's the sort of like, if you come to school, we'll, you know, you can be this. And you, then you see a, a person with a pink hat in a, in a, a sign and they're like, well, that looks kind of fun <laughs> if fascism ever comes to america it'll be you know, wrapped in a flag holding a bible and a cross right or it'll be in the form of liberalism they'd always say See, well and that's i i think it'll be in the form of any kind of extremism wh whichever one wins out and i think that they're both uh they're both oh, they were both invented by the same machine you know what i mean yeah well and it's that's almost like yeah it's what what's the saying like uh crazy people are are easier to control or something like or like a, a mob of, of people that are all frothing about one thing or the other is easier to you know you can aim that in a direction you know? yeah <laughs> versus like if if the whole country was was built on well what do you think versus um you know fuck that guy for being on the wrong team I, yeah, people uh, people don't like when I when I bring up the fact that politics has become very very footballish. Oh yeah, it, I'm, it, it has very little to do with the the, the I, issues and more I to do with your team, you know. Yeah, yeah, I can't affiliate with a uh, Democrat or Republican. I'm just like kind of a split. I, I'm fisc like when it comes to things that are money, mm -hmm. I'm really conservative mm -hmm. because I believe in math. Right, <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah it, but um, the liberals are g going nuts, dude. Right, they're just they can't accept reality mm -hmm. on news. Oh, and yeah. it's, it's 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 crazy. crazy. Yeah, they're well, just like Russia, 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 Russia. Russia, <laughs> Russia. <laughs> well, and I, Donald Trump is definitely not helping the situation. Like, I mean, he basically came to power in sort of a Hitlerian kind of way with you know 
Hitlerian. <laughs> That's Hitlerian. Uh, you know, I'm, I, you know, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to just throw out the Trump is Hitler thing, but um, you know, the, he got to, he he ran one of the most successful like dashing campaigns in the history of politics. It, he did it for like almost no money too. <laughs> See, I didn't know that. <laughs> Well, he spent like uh, somebody. He didn't really spend that much money. He had other people spend uh, about two hundred million, I think. Is, and that's lowballing it for a campaign, right? Yeah, yeah, and Hillary did well over a billion, and dude. she lost to a game show host. Oh, dude, I that boggles my. Well, I mean, I I'm not a. I was never a, a Hillary supporter, but. If there, I the thing that I was saying a lot around that time was like, man, if there's one person who could get me to register to vote, it would probably be Bernie Sanders. And now that guy's a fucking asshole too. <laughs> yeah, because he went around stomping for Hillary. He's yeah. like, hey, progressive people, I want to herd you into the Democratic Party. Right. Driving, driving that uh, the sports car up to the the congressional hearing or whatever. Yeah, he took the car. He took the cash and prizes. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he screwed us. He lied. Yeah, it's it's really easy now to look back and say, "Oh my god, oh my god, we were all taken for a, a giant ride." Ride, yeah. Um, dude, he even had like the drummer from Fish, like, and they were like apolitical, like they kept their mouths shut for for years. And the drummer from Fish, he wore, always wore that blue dress with the uh, pink donuts on it, and it changed. Uh, he wore like the pink Bernie thing with the glasses and the hair. And, uh, yeah, I, I honestly think that he had everybody fooled, you know, he just was, he literally was there to like throw himself in front of a bullet to try to get Hillary, uh, in office. And the most, the, the most crazy thing, it's fascinating. The fact that people are still trying to like, they're still trying to make it seem like it's worse than if Hillary were in office. I know Hillary wanted to do so many bad things. Yeah. And, and the fact that people are just like, Nope. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. They're like queen Hillary or, you know, we, they, uh, I don't know. I, I think Trump got elected because a lot of people were alone in that booth mm -hmm. and there was, a choice between the same old thing mm -hmm. and screw it up royally. Yeah. And a yeah, lot of people think, were just like, people I'm were... not doing the same old thing. I am dying because of the same old right. thing. And... I, th I think a lot of people, I think morbid curiosity played into it for the, uh, the apathetic types. That's true. <laughs> I think, um, I also think people just didn't want to see, you know, like Bush, Bush rubbed everybody really uneasily and i don't think i think a lot of people didn't want to see clinton clinton or, or anything like that even though they're all i mean if you look past the fact that there are two people in, in there with the same last name i mean they're honestly except for trump they're all um uh, it's it's all in the family you know what i mean yeah yeah seriously like, uh, i love uh bill uh bill burr was talking about uh Oh yeah, you know uh, Hillary Clinton was going to those meetings where, <laughs> where they were dressing like bears and pigeons and fucking each other. <laughs> Dude, yeah, the she's been bird. to that. Yeah, uh, <laughs> she's been to like that Jeffrey Epstein Island. Yes, Little Saint James. It's <laughs> yeah. also a pedophile island. Oh man. And yeah, they they just do Satanist shit. Yeah, and there's like, no law there. It's in international waters. I I feel like there was some videos, some like really really like you know beneath the coat you know just you know some video that got out of like some like some actual satanic rituals and there's like george clooney in the room or something like that like uh yeah apparently like the reason that there's such a giant separation between quote unquote us and quote unquote them is i feel like there's some serious like you know blood brother uh, spit swapping, yes. yeah, on. something, something. <laughs> it's 
It's like uh, when they're you... all doing secret somethings. <laughs> they're all they're all like on the level. They all know each other. They right. all it's like, gawk yeah. around the same subjects. So it's like you dig deep enough. I I always after I saw Eyes Wide Shut, I always I always thought that like if you dig deep enough in any direction, it, uh, eventually you're gonna get to a room of naked people in masks. Yeah. Them, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, that is. It's like yeah. you put in a formal complaint about your cable, and you and you dig in that direction. Eventually, you're gonna get to the house. Yeah, you know, and they're gonna be like, "What's the password?" Yeah, for daily. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, I just, uh, that, I, I honestly like, I felt like Stanley Kubrick was a genius until I saw that movie, and I just was like. Nah, he was old, and they were yeah. still letting him play with a camera. <laughs> um, are there any any old school guys that that like have remained sharp? I mean, I guess uh, Scorsese. Um, what what is his name? The, the Twin Peaks guy, David Lynch. David Lynch. He's a he was a voice on the Cleveland Show. He does animated. Oh, does he? Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. I listen to. I listen to Ralph Garman's little uh, 15 minute update podcast. Uh, he does, you know who he is? No. He does voices on Family Guy, and I think he's done The Simpsons. What's his name again? Ralph Garman. Uh, he also huh. does uh, Hollywood Babylon with Kevin Smith, and he's um, he's a really good impressionist. But he does a lot of the, the he has like some greatest hits, and so people will write in and they'll be like. Dear Ralph, I really love all eight of your impressions. And he'll say, oh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, people people write in and they're like, can you please say, can you please uh, recite the opening monologue from the Flash TV show as Pee Wee Herman, you know? <laughs> and oh, it's, God. It's pitch perfect, you know? That's <clears throat> funny. But yeah, I, uh, I listened to that because uh, I just knew he was going to shred the Justice League movie. And he did, and it was glorious. And uh, did you see that piece of shit? Uh, I watched some of it online, but yeah, yeah. whatever. It's uh, it was really awful. Actually, I said, I mean, in theaters, I definitely didn't steal it from <laughs> online. <laughs> Um, man, I, um, I, I love all the different ways that you can get bootleg stuff. Like I remember working at, oh yeah, records. everything, everything's bootlegged. The managers would burn, would burn DVD, our copies of the, the the test films. Like I remember we got to see the, what was that? Robin Williams one, like father's day where his, his son dies and he dies. Oh, world's greatest dad. World's greatest dad. Yeah, dude, I, I I like movies like that where I don't like it the first time I see it, and then I watch it again, and I'm like, this is fucking brilliant. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of like my a lot of my favorite anything's are like that, like um, oh, uh, dude, they put a uh, Mars Volta. That was another one I I wasn't quite sure of, and and now I just completely love anything that the guitar player does. Oh yeah, the guitar player is really good. mm Hmm. I don't. I don't know. That was. I. I saw them, a couple times. It was. Well, you. It was great. You and your brother uh, went and saw them on their like first tour, right? Like when they. Yeah. Like, in two thousand three. Yeah. That was. Yeah, I remember. I was. Uh, I was trying to go with you guys, but uh, my mom wouldn't let me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh shit! But yeah, that. Um, I remember when I was working at Red Robin, they came back through. That must have been like. 2008 to 2009 or something like that and i guess the lead singer was like ended up crawling through the audience and like biting people's ankles and stuff like that <laughs> <laughs> gosh yeah they're nuts they were they were so fun yeah i'd imagine they put on a a, a pretty wild show especially in that era um i saw a show of theirs from like 2011 or 2012 on the on the internet and it was a, uh, it was pretty sterile. Like it was still great. Like they still put on a good show, but um, like Cedric was drinking tea, <laughs> like between songs and stuff like that. Uh, one of my favorite performances that they uh, put on was they, uh, they were, it was the K Rock Weenie Roast 2005. Like Francis the Mute had come out, and the Widow was really popular. 
and so the K Rock DJ, while they're backstage, is like, "Hey, so you guys probably want to play your more popular stuff like the Widow." And that was the Widow at that time was pretty much the only like, you know, three to four minute like complete yeah you know, verse chorus verse song and um and so they were told that and then the the uh dj came out and was like are you guys ready to go on a freaky mind trip because that's what's probably going to happen with these guys give it up for the mars volta <laughs> and so um uh omar came out and grabbed the microphone and was like hey we don't we don't really know what that uh that intro is about and we couldn't think of anything to play so we're just going to kind of jam around for a little bit and uh, uh call title this anything you want uh call it um abortion the other white meat <laughs> and they just do like a 52 minute jam and like cedric uh in, improvises some lyrics but after a short while of doing that he just like whips out a typewriter and just like types the entire time <laughs> I like bands that like have the balls to do shit like that. Do you, do you, have you ever seen Amanda Palmer? She does crazy stuff. Amanda Palmer. Is she? She's like a a famous national type, or yeah. I don't know. No, I don't. think She I've was heard in the her. Dresden Dolls. That sounds familiar. Was she the the front front person? Yeah, play piano and sing. Right on. Uh, no, the the latest uh, front lady that I was introduced to was uh, Imogene Heap, and that was great stuff. Um, it's like she was doing this beautiful piano ballad, and then she went into the hook at the end, and I was like, oh, shit, the dubstep song. <laughs> <laughs> the dubstep car commercial. I know this song. <laughs> <sighs> All right, so you got some books with you. Oh, yeah. So I, I got you... Starship Troopers. Uh, I've I had always heard that this was a great fucking book. Yep, and I yeah I wondered if you had read that or anything. No, not yet. Robert Heinlein is uh one of my one of my faves. I should just start looking for those two words, Hugo Award. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Every, every Hugo Award winning book I've ever read was really, really good. <laughs> uh, started with Ender's Game, you know. Yeah, cl classic sci-fi, and uh, he wrote uh, this. Um, I probably should say the name of it and not just hold it up <laughs> for you to read. Have Spacesuit Will Travel. Yep, Have Spacesuit Will Travel. And it was written in, like, I think the 50s. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so this kid wants a spacesuit in a soapbox competition, like, in, in the like a, future. Like a soapbox derby kind of thing? Um, no, like, it used to be, like, some mail-in prize oh, thing okay. that they did before like telephones and stuff gotcha and so yeah this was in 1958 and um yeah this kid wins a spacesuit mm -hmm. and ends up getting abducted right on and, and and that's sort of the launch point yeah and that's sort of the launch point oh i love the 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 uh, creatures on the front yep it's uh, another thing that i've been uh, googling on or Google images in my spare time is um just like drawings of of creatures and aliens and stuff from different eras and it's really weird uh, to see what people thought of as uh, off back then you know what I mean? yeah yeah um, versus now where I, I think people you know the, the we are getting dumber but the smart people are getting smarter I feel um. And I think that's why we're starting to see more things like, you know, intangible creatures that like live in, in your memories, you know, <laughs> things like that. Like, um, Rick and Morty, you get into that at all? I watched the first season. The first season is great, but they just, uh, yeah, or that's the first and second. I think it's when Rick ends up in jail is what right. I, and, and so I that's the end of the, the second storm. season, but there's, uh, there's just so many great, like, uh, high concept 
episodes. Like there's one. Oh yeah, they're so complex. Yeah, I, I love the uh, well the one that I just brought up the 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 memory parasites. It's like okay, there are five, oh yeah there are five people in this room, and then like every time they have a memory, there's like or a, yeah a flashback like, yeah. There's like okay, there have always been six people in this room, and then by the end of the show, it's like a party of like. <laughs> I'm reverse giraffe, man. <laughs> you know? Yep, yep. All right, but uh, so, so Robert A. Heinlein, author of oh, author of Stranger in a Strange Land. I never knew that he wrote both Stranger in a Strange Land and, and Starship Troopers. Yeah, he was a really big sci-fi author back in the. Was 50s. this also in the in the fifties? That was. I'm not his, sure when Starship Troopers was written. We got here. First published in uh, no, first published in the U.S. of A. in 1959. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Starship Troopers. Yeah. It had some pretty advanced concepts for. And the the bug part is only one part, right? Like the the stuff that's in the movie that occupies like one part of the book. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, that was a. Uh, there's was... all sorts of cool things like uh, there's these guys that have like superpower suits. Mm -hmm. So, right on. Yeah, I'm gonna read the shit out of this. Yeah, I've been I've been uh, reading voraciously lately, like like sort of how I was back when I was younger. And it's uh, what happened was is I just uh, I had sort of, I had all but stopped reading um, paper stuff because I was on my phone all the time, and um, I was I was reading. Uh, things about how to get better at talking <laughs> for, uh, for podcasts and stuff. Like yeah, that. they say if you spend fifteen to an hour a day reading, it just it it improves your the language center of your brain. And um, they also say to to read out loud, and I've done that like a few times. But you know, I've I've got roommates, so I'm sitting. I'll be sitting there on the toilet, like with its evolutionary progress held down by almost zero by lack of radiation and consequent almost unhealthy. Sanctuary, you know. <laughs> oh, but that's that's another thing. Uh, I think uh, we talked about this before uh, before we started rolling tape. But just people reading, uh, or did we? I think did we? Were we taping when we talked about that? Ah, fuck it. You know, uh, we'll, yeah. this will be a callback. But people reading uh, Green Eggs and Ham and getting like multiple thousands of views on YouTube. Oh yeah, just like pretty. <laughs> you said like hot girl reads. There, something or something. There's a, an air quotes hot girl like reading um, anything from like Green Eggs and Ham to the Bible, but she's whispering it to give you that ASMR like uh, hair standing up trigger thing. Thousands of views, ads popping up. You know, she's probably got a house from YouTube. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but yeah, I gotta I gotta start doing everything. I gotta do my own version of everything that I see on YouTube. It's it's the only way. <laughs> like uh i was trying to figure out how to do reaction videos and um i'm running into a lot of uh education that i didn't see happening and it's kind of neat <laughs> the whole, just little teeny tiny things like okay i want to put a video on top of another video okay this program doesn't take mp4 it wants uh, yeah. API. So you got to convert it. Yeah. Right. And then you learn how to, you know, you get the converter and you, you learn what each of those acronyms means and stuff like that. I love how much you can teach yourself on the internet. There's just everything. Yeah. And I think that's what scares the uh, demand. If they, you know, yeah. I yeah. think <laughs> that's why there's the, the rise of the social justice through censorship people. Right. Right. I mean, uh, Base, I mean, I, I know a lot of people. Uh, I've lost a lot of friends from starting this podcast and like talking freely. But <laughs> yeah, talking but, um, about your beliefs, which you should <laughs> never actually do. Right. <laughs> um, but you know, I, I've just always—I can't remember who said it first. But if it looks like censor censorship and smells like censorship, it's probably censorship. You yeah. Know? And. Uh, I remember an ex-girlfriend and I were talking about, well, the fact that we're losing certain words is just our society evolving. And I was like, balderdash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Poppy Would you hear that gobbledy yeah. cook? <laughs> That's a bunch of hornswoggle. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> so, but yeah, those, those, like the, the words that we just said used to be curse words. 
you know? <laughs> or g- calling people gay. Yeah. We, th- we did that like 20 times a day, uh, I, like I in remember. the 90s, <laughs> middle school. The, uh, uh, did, I, did I put it up somewhere? I just bought a, um, I bought a few graphic novels uh, at Entertain Martin. One of them is Blunt Man and Chronic. And, um, <laughs> and it says, uh, at the end, it said, Will this queer? And it says uh, in parentheses, <laughs> meaning odd, not gay. Duo <laughs> queer, and then it said in parentheses, meaning mess up, also not gay. Up the situation of the queer, okay, meaning gay. <laughs> 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 well, and um, I think that there's a lot of a lot of gay people that are. Well, you know, I mean, there's a thousand different things that mean a thousand different other things to a thousand different people. Yep. But I think there, there's, uh, there's as many, uh, homosexual folks who are fine with the, the, uh, usage of gay as a, uh, a downplay, um, as there are gay people who think that all the words should be eliminated, you know? Yeah. What, yeah. What happens? Or all... you can't misgender people. That's, that's right. a crime. Yeah. I just, I don't know. I, I think that, like, the ultimate gender fluid is that there is no gender, and so why are we trying to create genders? Yeah, uh, there's, mean, the, the there's s- just biologi- <laughs> biologically male and female, and then I, I don't know what people expect after that. Like, I'm, I will tolerate people right, if, well, they, if they want me to use certain pronouns or whatever, if they don't feel comfortable... Um, if, yeah, I, I, I feel that to an extent. But, but it more pisses me off because it's just me censoring myself. Right. Well, and I don't think that it's our responsibility, especially the more extreme it gets. I don't think it's our... Like, if something looks like a girl, I'm going to call it a girl. Like, if it's got, if it's got you know, uh, long hair, pretty eyes, and a shapely body, <laughs> yeah, and a vagina, I'm going to call it a girl. But if yeah. it's like, excuse me, sir... I am just starting to think about transitioning, you know? Yeah. It's like, God, I don't, I don't think it's my responsibility I to know. I don't want to learn your life's <laughs> journey. You know, um... Well, you, and uh, I, we, just the whole thing, I'll tolerate it, but I'm not going to lie about science. Right. I'm not going to lie about biology. The first... Uh, yeah. The so. first, uh transgender um well i think i think um he was just a transvestite um but he was really comfortable with himself and maybe you've met him he was a substitute teacher at like all the schools his name was buzz (laughs) his name was buzz and he was cool as shit (laughs) <laughs> yeah and he he had long hair and he kept it in a ponytail and i'll just never forget one time i i met him at like an art thing and he was dressed in a dress and had uh, eye makeup on and um it just seemed like the most natural thing in the world uh, to, and, and i i said i said oh hi buzz and he goes hi how's it going and then like after all that and he said oh sorry that you're getting attacked by the the giant uh, yeah rainbow caterpillar <laughs> Um, but he was very pleasant. I I said, Hey buzz, how's it going? And, and, um, he just, there was no animosity about the fact that I used his male name while he was dressed up as a female. And he said, and after about 15 minutes of, of, uh, really pleasant interaction, he said, Oh, and it's, it's Bethany, you know, when, when I'm dressed like this and I said, Oh God, I'm, I'm really fucking sorry. (laughs) You know? And he said, oh, you know, it's okay. I, I figure it took me uh, 45 years to find myself. I can give uh, everybody else around me some some time to catch up. Yeah. And I was like, that's fucking great. And he was, you know, not in denial about the fact that he was a man. He just he just felt like a woman. And so he, he played that role. And I just, I don't know, dude. I, I think that it's going to, we're going to, we're going to go through all this you know, labeling and, and which gender thing. And then we're just going to come right back to like, there's a gender of witches. (laughs) Is is there really? No, (laughs) I'm just, you said which gender. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt it, but yeah, I just think that like the more extreme, like if somebody starts turning themselves into a tiger, 
like sur- surgically turning themselves into a tiger. I just I think that it's like that should just be like tiger guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or like yeah. if somebody wants to have like, you know, three dicks, you know, that just becomes like three dick guy. Like I he doesn't get his own title that everybody has to say. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you like know, a- there's there's male, female and hermaphrodite. Mm-hmm. Hermaphrodite is usually whichever genitals are functional, usually one set is not functional. Right. Is the one they use and mm-hmm. they surgically correct it very easily when they're small. Right. And uh or when they're babies. Mm-hmm. And um that's that's it. You can do a bunch of plastic surgery and stuff. Right. But you're not you can't have babies. <laughs> yeah. You you're not going to have a vagina. Yeah. No, uh, like no or a or a penis. <laughs> it's gonna look like a inside out hot dog. <laughs> oh, uh, you gosh. know, it's just gonna be horrifying. So it's you can turn yourself into whatever plastic surgery nightmare you want, but <laughs> There's I'm there's still just the just the yeah you know I I, I gotta I gotta roll with uh, with Sam Harris and, and Ben Shapiro on on that one uh, it's just it it is what it is and you can and you can get whatever cool alteration to your body that you want but at the end of the day it's like produce a baby yeah. <laughs> You know, and, and it's, oh, so it's, you're you're a woman now? Okay, menstruate. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, if, I, I, you know, if somebody wants to be, if like, if somebody presents a feminine energy and wants to be called a woman, you know, that's that's fine. But at the, at the same time, I, I I'm not gonna. I'm not going to change much else about me for that. You know? Yeah, I'll change a little bit of my speech for. I, basically, for it, respect. Comes, it comes down to. I know I'm a good person, and if I say a word that without my knowledge has become offensive... Taboo, yeah. Get fucked, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> Grow up. Get over it. Yeah, I just... Uh, I, I think that what's happening is people are really, really, truly searching for an extreme identity. Like, they're... they're, they're and people out there just grasping at straws. Right. And I think that there's like um, my my roommate Chelsea, uh, she's a uh, a band director at a at a high school, and and she says it's a you know it's very much a trend for for kids to be in transition, and I and it's weird. Yeah, they're people, doing they're pushing it on kids young. Right, and I you know and I think about uh, I, I think about the uh, an adult doing it, and it's like okay, whatever, like. They me, don't even know what they want to do for a living. Right. Don't and let they, them but they pick know, their they own know gender. That they want to be a different gender. I just, yeah, I wonder a lot of times what would happen to our society if, like, all the power got shut off for about two weeks. <laughs> I think that that's, like, all the time it would take. Like, two to three weeks. For our society just to tear itself apart. We would either tear... We would either tear itself apart... See, that's... you got to find the magic number because you don't want... I mean, you don't want tribes to to rise up in in the uh, violent sort of way. But if you shut everything off for about two weeks, people will stop giving a fuck about stuff that doesn't matter. Like, what happens when you can't find water, motherfucker? Like, yeah, exactly. Who are you gonna vote for then? You know? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. If if people if people couldn't get on the internet. And, and I'll own up to it. If I if I couldn't bitch about other local musicians in town, and I had to go find water, <laughs> yeah, there would be a giant shift in my priorities. You know, <laughs> yeah. Um, like, but yeah, people who are like blocking motherfuckers on Facebook over, you know, I just uh, this lady started getting into it with me, and I was like, I was like, I'm just gonna, you know get this over with and tell you to fuck off and I'm not going to read your article. And basically like what happened was, is I, I, I try to keep my, my arguments local, but every once in a while I, I get pulled into those like mega threads where there's like thousands of comments and stuff like that. Oh yeah. And I was reading an article and, um, I do that. I, I 
I, I say disparaging things to Corey Gardner. <laughs> yeah. Well, the the I can't remember what what the original article I was reading was, but it was a um, it was like a it was a dear it was like a hey white people please stop dot 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 and I was like oh why am I clicking here we go click and I read it and the article was written by a white person and I and it was uh, about how terrible white males are yeah, yeah and I and I my comment was this article seems to spend a lot of time telling black folks what they can and cannot do yeah you can't patronize or placate people like right. that because then you're not treating them like an equal right that's what I think that's that's racist mm -hmm. so i, I yeah. completely agree but uh, there's a lot of people who who think that it's not enough to be like a, a friend of mine because I, I was i was saying i'm colorblind which is now i know a buzzword a buzzword not to use in certain crowds because they're like oh well you not caring you not seeing color is part of the problem and i was just like Ugh, all right <laughs> and so i've just i've just sort of developed this core belief which is like Am I racist? No. If you think I'm racist, that's that's like bone chillingly offensive and go fuck yourself. You know? Yeah, that's <laughs> I don't know where you got that from, but Right. Eh. This whole thing of like you're well, white and therefore you're systemically racist is just like something I refuse to tolerate. Yeah. And I mean that's that's not to say that like I'm not willing to help uh, disenfranchised folks out. But at the same time, like, I, I'm not doing it to fix anything, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm doing it because it's a, it's the right thing to do, but it's not like, oh man, and now, now I can feel good in church because I helped the blackies out, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Those poor black people that can't do things for themselves. It's like, no, no, yeah. you can't think that way. My, my That's, favorite, some of my favorite my conversations. My last have, girlfriend was black. Yeah. And she liked being treated like an equal. Right. And she liked when people didn't have a personality change when a black person walked in the room. Right. And like, you know, I spoke to her as exactly as I'm speaking to you right now. Right. And, you know, there, there's times well, there's times when an inflection can, can make something funnier or, or it can in, uh, yes, enrich, there is. enrich in a story. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that that's racist. You know what I mean? Like uh, Louis C.K. was talking about he was making pancakes for his daughter. And she she was none the wiser. She just knows the voice as the happy man. But it's like a he's doing the voice of like a big black chef, like making like I'm gonna make the pancakes for the little girl, you know. <laughs> and he, oh he gosh, says, he says maybe don't tell the the other kids at school about the happy man voice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe just keep the happy man voice at, ha um, at, at home. He he did another voice. He's like. Uh, He's like, what the fuck? Uh, who the fuck you think this is? Like, what do you think? I'm Chinese or something? You know, <laughs> like doing, doing a, a clearly like East Coast black voice and, uh, but you know, um, making it and asking if he was Chinese. But yeah, I just you know that that stuff. I just uh, yeah. Once all that goes away, we're just gonna live in a very very bland, nothing society. You know. Yeah, that would be that would be great if our society just wasn't that exciting. <laughs> yeah, we we'll we'll continue to save all the sick people. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll and we'll uh we'll not be allowed to say anything and uh, we'll just we'll just live in this sterile sort of environment where uh, where you order everything online, which I'm guilt I'm starting to fall into that trap. Me too. Like I would love nothing My more. My parents have the Amazon thing, so. Me too. And, uh, and I and use a couple, that. A couple, uh, Dan uses it. My girlfriend uses it. And it's just, it's so convenient. And when it hit me was, I was like, I need bass strings. And I, I ran down to Guitar Center to grab some bass strings, <clears throat> paid $30 for them, and drove back. And I was like, holy shit, there goes like, you know, $40 right out of my pocket, you know, driving and coming back so so the next time i get bass strings i'm just going to order them on amazon because it's like it's cheaper and there's free shipping and next day because you're pro my parents are prime members right. <laughs> and uh and the thing is is i would love to like like my perfect world is like this neighborhood would be like 
the village of Whitehorn. <laughs> that's the that's the street. Yeah, uh, and, it be, and it would be like you go over you go over to to say you go over to Tim's house over there to um to buy coffee or you know what I mean something yeah like, or and then you go over to this like in that guy's house is the music store because he's the music guy you know that kind of stuff and um, I guess there would uh, during the interim there would still have to be like factories that make all this stuff but eventually you keep that mentality going and people are going to be like, Oh, I know how to make a string. And like, if you need strings, I'll make them for you. But I need your, uh, you, you're your the, copper like, wire. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're the, the copper wire, you know, that thing, or you're the, uh, you're the cook. So it's like, if you want strings, I need like, beef, you, yeah, you, know? <laughs> you, yeah. You need beef to go give the, the guy to give the copper wire to the, yeah. Yeah. I just think that that would be amazing. Yeah. I think, we should try to build our community because well i think about that and like i said this it's like these people are cool these people i'm I'm pointing at houses out the window on my street these people are cool <laughs> these people are cool those people are cool this guy's an asshole and these people are assholes over here yeah like uh this guy has left notes on like when we have like five people here for band practice and you know just various artsy type shit that happens um and people park on the street like they'll leave notes for every car like please don't park in front of my house you know it's and and dan and i were talking about it. it's like why why what about me parking right there is affecting it's, you right now yeah you know? seriously what part of your life is yeah well the same thing like uh you know it's it's winter now but uh the when i first moved in my lawn got crazy <laughs> got crazy out of control and, and then uh, the, I, the the cops got called, like the community police or whatever. They they left a little note saying like, um, oh yeah, like the HOA people. Yeah, or... I don't know if it was HOA, but they somebody oh, literally called the the those green cop cars that say community on the side. Oh Jesus! And they left a note in my door that said, um, if your lawn is is any taller than 10 inches uh then that's a, a like a finable offense or something like that <laughs> and i just was like how boring is either this person or this person's uh lives that that they're worried that about they would somebody do that else's yeah fucking lawn much less their own lawn you know what i mean <laughs> yeah seriously yeah I, I feel like uh i don't know i'm just a other other than the logical like you know keep the weeds away from the the pipe infrastructure under the house i'm very much a fan of overgrowth like i wish that just like i wish that there was just like moss coming up over everybody's fences you know yeah um i think if i lived down here i'd do zero escaping or waterless yeah oh i like the first uh, first week i moved in here i shut the water the um sprinklers water, the sprinklers i can't talk right now but yeah, I think eventually I'm gonna go completely dirt or put some rocks in there or something like that. But the thing with rocks is then like weeds come up through them and then people have decided that that looks bad too. Can you grow food here? Uh, I bet I'd be able to. We have a huge garden. Yeah, yeah. I I've thought a lot about getting a, a rooster and uh and and growing like a vegetable that I could stand to eat. Um, because I remember I I worked. Uh, a friend's garden <clears throat> for a while and they would send me home with some of the like i couldn't i can't eat tomatoes like i just can't like, heartburn or whatever no that's what i get with them yeah not so much the heart i mean if i eat a whole bunch of like if i eat an entire pizza and then try to go to bed i'll get heartburn but it's something about just the like you know like how you bite into it and it sort of like shits in your mouth you know yeah yeah <laughs> um but they sent me home with like carrots and like lettuce and i remember eating like half a carrot and getting full because <laughs> it was like so much better than the carrots in the store and stuff like that yeah um and so i've thought about like growing lettuce carrots and you know maybe potatoes for filler and then having a chicken for protein like you know for eggs for protein and then just saying you know fuck the grocery store we eat eggs <laughs> you know yeah <laughs> But I, then I, I also read something on the, you know, you're saying it's amazing how much you can learn on the internet. I also read something that said your body can, like, die from eating the same thing all the time. Yeah, you need <laughs> variety or you get weird vitamin deficiencies. 
Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so what's, uh, you you got a third book there, going, cutting sharply back to the books. <laughs> oh yeah, hey, can we? Uh... Oh, uh, actually, you know we're uh, we're at almost ninety minutes, so we can go ahead and wrap it up if you if you need a smoke. Oh, okay. Well, here I I'll do the third book. Anyway. Sure. So this book is a Dragonlance book. I heard you. Say you like that in one of your podcasts. Yeah, I uh, I bought number one, the first one again, and I'm having a hard time getting through the first chapter, but I know I'll like it eventually. Of, <laughs> of uh, this one? Of uh, Dragonlance? Just, I, I Wikipedia Dragonlance and picked and found the first book and bought that because when I was younger, I, I, I picked up a, uh, like a complete collection of like the, the golden twins or whatever it was, like the, the big broody guy and then the... Uh, magician guy and uh i think it was like cameron and uh someone else i can't remember but it was like a, a journey that they took and i really liked that and so I, I was like okay i'm gonna read this whole sucker and uh i started reading the first book and like it's a it's a girl cleaning tables in a bar and i'm just like jesus christ this is dry <laughs> yeah <laughs> but i know i'll like it once it gets to the good shit <laughs> So this one's, uh, it's called uh, Draconian Measures, and it's volume two. It's it's a, like a 20-book series. Right. But it's kind of like uh, Star Wars. Oh, we'll start it on part four. Gotcha. You know, so, yeah. um, uh, and there are these dragon people, as you can see. They're kind of lizard dragon people with awesome. wings. That, that looks like late seventies, early eighties. Yeah. Talking about the weird creatures from different eras. Let's, let's yeah, see what we got they here. they can't exactly fly, but um, their wings are pretty useful. And uh, human beings are hunting them to extinction. Oh, okay. And it, um, this is one of their like uh, final stand. So it's just kind of an off story about uh, Commander Kang. But Commander Kang puzzles over a sinister mystery. Why are some of his men vanishing? Kang will have to use draconian measures to defeat, to defeat his foes and save his race. They'd better be enough. The fate of his entire race hangs in the balance. Yep. I can dig it. Yeah. So, it, I don't oh, know. It's cool. cool. So, like, all the... All the bad little... guy creatures you're supposed to kill in Dungeons and Dragons. Mm -hmm. Those those are the good guys in this. Oh, that's and awesome. and human beings are the bad guys. Yeah, Wizards of the Coast, man. Did they always put out Dragonlance or was it a, was it a different publishing company and then got picked up by Wizards of the Coast? I think it's just a world. Dra I think Dragonlance is just kind of their setting for oh. it. Oh. So like different it's, authors can. It's like jump Dungeons in. and Dragons, but not because. Yeah. That's that's trademarked. You know, I recently tried to. Did, did you ever play D and D? Oh God, yes. <laughs> I, I thought so, but I, I wasn't. I wasn't into it when we were regularly seeing each other. But um, yeah, I bought my girlfriend's kids a a, a starter kit, and uh, I was like, oh yeah, fucking starter kit, no sweat. I, I still have no fucking idea what's going on. Like, um, basically, all I wanted to do was create a character, have a, a badass DM, and then roll for the efficiency of my actions. And apparently there's a lot more to it than that. Oh, yeah. My, my girlfriend was like, I will never make fun of somebody who plays Dungeons and Dragons ever again. <laughs> yeah, it's so much. It's so much information. Like every every Dungeons and Dragons type video game or any of the video games from like that universe or oh I, I was world. huge into the RPGs when when I was uh, oh still am but I just it's hard to like sit through an entire RPG anymore yeah well that's it all came from Dungeons and Dragons fucking right. rolling dice in in your mm -hmm. basement yeah see I wanna I I, I feel like. The character creation makes sense. Like, okay, you you pick, yeah. you pick a name, you roll for your traits and stuff like that. Yep. Um, so that all seems pretty easy. But then the whole like, like I literally just want to be like, what happens if I kick at the door? 
<laughs> you know, stuff like that. Yeah, um, doors actually have a resistance check. Oh. <laughs> and it depends so, what kind of door. Okay, so say I walk up to a wooden door. Okay, that's going to be strength. And Strength, like strength is the kind of resilience it has? No, strength is the trait you're going to use for that. So you're, okay. going, to, you're going to use your strength score. And let's say... Um, you're a half orc, so you have like a plus one strength. And that means you, whatever you roll, gets plus one. Plus one, one. Okay. yeah. And uh, you just have to roll higher than the resistance of the door. So the DM should have this all set up. Oh, beforehand. Okay. okay, cool. So like, if you make your own story, yeah, you kind of you kind of have to invest the time in being like. All right, this door is going to be a bitch to get through. Yep. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. Or yeah, it can it can be like a metal door cuz you're supposed to find the key or Okay. Yeah, yeah, stupid stuff like that. No, I I love stuff like that. Like I've always thought that that was like the like um Or being a rogue is so fun and That's it like the, can be the exciting stuff like that. Yeah, the yeah. thief, yeah. Is it still pretty much mage, paladin, thief and then those, those are like uh, classes, right? Yeah, there's like fighter mage, thief, cleric, uh, berserker, druid. Uh, yeah, that shit, that shit is so inspiring. Remember, yeah. I, like I've been, uh, Reading I've been trying the books. to write a... What's up? Have you read any of the books? N not the... Like the player's handbook? Oh, sure. Yeah, I've read. Yeah. I've like looked at the PDF. I, I didn't make it all the way through... Um, but yeah, I've been trying to write a book since I was like young and I always start, but I never finish. And I, and I feel like the dice rolling would, would be like a, a neat literary tool. I actually do that. Do you really? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we didn't even get to the fact that you're a writer. <laughs> yeah. I have some stupid stories that I just keep going on and on and on with. That's so like different volumes or just like, like Stephen King style where it's like a, a thousand page book. Uh, no, yeah, just different volumes. That's, it's, uh, that's cool. this main thing I work on is superhero, or er, superhero, uh, claims adjustment agent. Right on. So, like, it's a world with superheroes, but, um, you have to buy, like, superhero insurance, because superheroes devastate shit. Right. When S Superman shoots his laser beam eyes and whatever blocks it. And it, it shoots off, off and it different. <laughs> kills a building. Well, yeah, thousands of people die and uh -huh. um, humans are left to pick up the pieces. Right. Yeah, so you have to have superhero insurance if it, like, a, you super, live in a yeah. superhero city. Yeah, so, you know, I wrote one just kind of about introducing people to the world. Um uh -huh. I wrote just basic stuff. Um that they destroy and then I did a fraud story uh -huh. where somebody rented like a bulldozer to fuck up their car to try to get superhero, superhero insurance, insurance. Yeah, pay, pay out from pay the out. superhero insurance yep. oh that's clever yep uh, and you were you were saying um, you haven't published anything because it's it's hard to get uh, published yeah and it's I should just publish it online and yeah, stuff, but um, what is it? WordPress or uh, you can create a website with PowerPoint or something like that. Oh yeah. I I, I don't know what the that little backdoor hack is, but, uh, but yeah, that would be that would be cool to read. Just you know, you know, you gotta imagine there's all those people that are like literally making making money off their fan fiction. Yeah. <laughs> Stupid Star Wars fan fiction. Yeah. Yeah, I. Uh, my favorite fan fiction is the crossover, like when somebody's like, "Yeah, My Little Pony" and Pokemon, you know. But like, uh, like I've been I've been wrestling with the concept of Batman versus Predator. <laughs> close. Uh, what would happen if Batman were for some reason removed from Gotham, but uh, John McClane some for some reason gets entered into Gotham? You know what I mean? <laughs> Die Hard. Die Hard, yeah. So, like, my... the Great all, Christmas movie. Yeah, all, I, all I've got so far is that, like, after the end of the first movie, um, he gets, like, he vanishes and appears in Gotham. But now I'm like, why? Like, which villain has, A, 
interdimensional powers and B why, you know? Fate. Uh Doctor Fate? Yeah. Doctor Fate would work. Um so basically uh Doctor Fate Doctor Strange or, if you wanted to do Marvel. Marvel or a, a John Constantine would you know, he would keep it in the D C universe. Um but then but then I would have to like probably crack a Bible if I if I involved him. Yeah. Um but uh, the one that I keep landing on is a uh, Mixie Spitlick, the guy whose name you got to make him say his name backwards to get him to disappear in his uh, back into the fifth dimension or whatever. Oh yeah, it could be the the device could be simple, so simple like you know in his dimension, Die Hard is a movie, and so he wanted basically he just wanted to see what would happen if, if that favorite, was real. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> And so, oh, should I kick that again? So it'll probably set up a plot where, I don't know, who's the most Hans Gruberian Batman villain? Probably like Harvey Dent, Two-Face or something like that. So yeah. Like, it, for some it, reason, he would take over two, a two-tower thing, you know. <laughs> oh, dude, that could be, that could be dark. Yeah. What if, uh, what if Two-Face was in, was in charge of the World Trade Center shit? Oh, God, yeah. That, and would, that would be... Uh, John I, McClane has to crawl through the vents of the world trade center and Jesus. talk about how it's like a microwave oven and oh man that's a i can't wait because uh, uh even that has a, a smattering of like too soon even though it's like what 17 years ago at this point yeah uh dude that happened when we were in freshman year in high school yeah that's and they were door. just like and go about your day yeah and i, I remember it's like you're now, still you're still gonna have class but we're gonna turn on uh so I, I always thought it was funny. Some teachers had Fox and some teachers had CNN. <laughs> I feel like that's good though. Like yeah. back, back then, you you had a. I watched the second plane hit live. I don't. I don't know. I yeah. I, I was just remember, like, uh, holy fuck! When that building just yeah. controlled them. Well, I don't know. It just fell. It burst into nothing. Do you do you think that that was all a a coup? That was like an, an inside job. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I still haven't decided. I've seen so many documentaries. It's it's fascinating to me. Like, um, well, I used to be really, really interested in explosives. Uh huh. And uh, the way that the trade center just fell mm -hmm. and turned to, turned into like dust, pretty much is <laughs> is how they control demolition. Yeah, because like. Without it falling With, over one yeah usually other. it would fall over in one direction or something right which is what the pieces of the top would have done if they would have broken off so like yeah. well, I, I don't know why yeah and i wonder they're designed to have a plane hit them and they'll be fine yeah yeah and i wonder because there wasn't any debris well i don't know there wasn't any debris coming from the like there was, there were no chance yeah. that flew forward, you know, just all that stuff. There's just hundreds of thousands of pages about it online. Too, so. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's that's what I was gonna say. Is you should uh, you, your book format should be in in the form of a, a folder with papers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be uh, that would be underground, just like it's yeah. just like a notebook file. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would that would work. Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's so weird that we still. I mean, I I love the book you know what i mean yeah but, um but yeah you i mean you literally can put anything online and eventually this is going to go away. you think this will go away in our lifetime or you think there there's still enough people that like having them around um i think i think they'll be i think books will stay around for a long time right especially they'll be collectors they'll turn into antique antiquities antiques i i think so and i also <laughs> think that um like this is this book that I'm holding right here is forever until it's destroyed. Yeah. And so I think if everything does go the way of the screen and like everything you read is online, how much, I mean, it doesn't take a retard to realize that, uh, you know, you're not going to be able to read the real Mark Twain anymore. It's going to be put through the, the internet filter, like the government internet filter. Yeah. And, uh, but if you still have this, then you'll be able to read stupid government. The stupid government. But I honestly, I think through um, 
The internet is about the free exchange of other people's ideas. <laughs> uh, yeah, dude, I love the internet. I know. Yeah, so the uh, the repealing of net neutrality sure fucked everyone up just like they thought it would. <laughs> yeah. Do you know that uh, there's like uh, 40 cities in Colorado that have municipal broadband? Really? Like yeah. Like citywide Wi-Fi? Yes. Fort Collins... Has a one gig, um, like mem mem or ram up, or whatever or, uh, or up, oh. and like uh, half a gig down mm -hmm. for sixty dollars a month. That's ten times faster than any internet service you can buy. That's fucking incredible. <laughs> I know that's great. Uh, that's that's some free market shit right there. You know, it's like. Yeah, you know, you, you take you take away the uh, the rules and regulations, and people are gonna figure out how to get you the the best shit. <laughs> like, oh, we we want uh, we want the best shit for our citizens, so we're gonna have uh, citywide Wi-Fi. Well, they did it so, um, because they knew the net neutrality thing was just gonna come up over and over and over again. Right. So they're just like, let's. Step around it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whenever you... Do it our own way. Whenever you present a thinking mind with a problem, that's when creativity happens versus, like, when you present uh, a, an individual with, like, rules and regulations. That's like a... That's like an intellectual boner killer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I think uh, I think that's a good note to end on. Intellectual boner killer. Intell intellectual boner killer. Coming Always end on 20, a strong joke. 2018, the intellectual <laughs> boner killers. <laughs> I, I wonder if that's a band name or not. Uh, stop promoting censorship, young people. Stop promoting censorship. And, like, division. And stop, stop being fucking angry at each other for stupid goddamn reasons. Yeah. <laughs> like, if somebody punches you in the eye, that's a reason to get angry. Yeah. Some Somebody uh, somebody changing genders is, is funny, but it's, it's not a reason to punch somebody in the eye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Signing off. Goodbye.